Hello everyone, today we are breaking down Season 1, Episode 1, The Greenlanders of Vikings Valhalla. Remember to like the video, it helps out the channel a lot, and subscribe, and yada yada yada, let's get to it. I feel like I should state this right away, this is historical fiction, so it is based on real people and some real events, but it's a dramatization, so things are changed to make a more interesting show. For instance, two of the main characters, Leif Erikson and Harold Sigurdsson, never meet. Leif died around 1020 AD, Harold was born in 1015 AD, and in the show, they are full-grown men. My point is, if you need to write a paper on Vikings, probably best not to use this as a source, though it would give you the basic understanding of it, just details would be wrong. The first thing we see is a Viking settlement near London. Geographically, this would be a region known as the Danelaw. The Danelaw was a part of England where the laws of the Danes were dominant. These areas were mostly occupied by Danes and other Norsemen. They are having a goodbye celebration for Prince Harold Sigurdsson as he heads back to Norway. His brother Sten is the one giving his goodbye speech. They all say school at the end of the toast. This means cheers or good health. Sten cannot stay to see Harold off. The King of Wessex has summoned him. Though he believes that someone can give him a better send-off, and he sees a pretty lass eye-effing Harold from across the room. Unfortunately for Harold, all he got was a kiss and had to leave since his boat was ready. We now find ourselves with Sten and some of the other Norsemen entering London. We see King Othelred greeting Sten and his men. Sten asks if there is a threat since he said it was urgent. So Sten has some allegiance towards the king, or he could be paid handsomely for being on retainer. The king knows how it is St. Bryce's Day and how they all had to leave their feasts and families, so he asks them to join him. So they do, they take a seat and start eating. Othelred then has a little monologue about the Danelaw and how it was used to keep the peace between the Vikings and the English. Sten mentions how they have been there so long that many of them don't even know their own language. Othelred then says that that's the problem. You are not Saxon, this is not your home. He then says that tonight I order all Vikings who live on this island to be exterminated. We then see that this invitation was a trap and archers from the balcony above start firing on the Vikings killing them. The village they were at as well was put to the torch and the Danes living there killed. This event in history is known as the St. Bryce's Day Massacre and this did happen. King Canute, the king of Denmark, would not let this go without notice, however, and he called for all Vikings to meet at Kattegat to form an army of revenge. We are now on the northern sea seeing a bunch of long ships heading towards Kattegat, answering the call from King Canute. Kattegat may sound familiar to those who watched the original show because it was a setting there as well, but this is a hundred years after those events, so it may look a little different. They are in a storm and most likely some of those ships are not going to make it. We then see Leif Erikson and his sister, Freydis Eriks daughter, and they are in the group of long ships making their way to Kattegat. A giant wave is about to come right for them. Leif tells the crew exactly what to do and they are able to survive the wave. We see in the background a different long ship capsizing. Leif in history is known as a great Norse explorer. He is thought to be the first European explorer to have set foot in North America. So this scene shows how good of a long ship captain he is, which was probably pretty accurate being such a traveled man. We are now with Harold Sigurdsson at Kattegat. They are finding bodies of Vikings who are washing up on shore from the storm the previous night. Leif and his crew finally make it there. A man asks how they were able to avoid the storm. Well, they didn't. It also seems that they were the only ship who made it through the storm for now. Leif tells some of the crew to stay behind. He tells Freydis to talk to the captains at the harbor and then the rest will search the town with him. So it seems they are looking for someone or something in this town. They may not be here for the war with England. We are now with Harold, again looking over the dead they lost to the storm. He is informed they lost hundreds to it. Leif and his crew walk by some slaves for sale. Some are astonished by them because they have never seen people that don't look like themselves. Leif tells his crew he's going to check the Great Hall to see if the person they are looking for has paid homage. He tells the rest to search the market, so they are looking for a person. Harold sees Freydis and decides to talk to her. We found out that they came from Greenland and it took them five weeks to make the journey with no stops. 
Harold is quite impressed by this feat. Freydis jabs at him, saying you are easily impressed. The two introduce themselves to one another. Then Harold says, after such a long journey, I'm sure a hot bath would sound good to you. She replies with a lot of things would sound good. A bit of flirting happening here. We return to Leaf entering the Great Hall. He's a bit in awestruck by it. He is from Greenland. He is not used to seeing so many people or such great structures. As he is walking, we see people making offerings to Odin, placing objects into the fire. Vikings, or at least these ones, believed in Norse mythology, so Odin and Thor, and this does play a major part in the show. Leif meets a group of people. He is looking at their crucifixes that they are wearing. So the other main religion for the Vikings at this time was Christianity. So some people believed in Christ while others believed in the old ways, Odin. One of the Vikings in the group says that Leif must have had family killed in the slaughter to have come all the way from Greenland. Leif has no idea what he means. So Leif has no idea about the St. Bryce's Day Massacre or the army being put together by King Canute. This kind of shows how isolated the Greenlanders are compared to some of the other Viking provinces. We then find out what Leif and his crew are here for. They're looking for a man who bears this cross, and he has a drawing of it. Another Viking by the name of Alfrin wants Leif's coat, says he will pay double what it cost. Leif shows a scar and says this is what it cost. So, he killed a polar bear and made a coat out of it. So, it seems that the Greenlanders seem to be more of the old ways compared to some of the other clans who have adopted more English traditions. He tells Alfred to go away. He's not selling his coat. Alfred decides to try and attack him. Leif disarms him quite easily and really shows his prowess as a fighter. He is forced to stop when a group of women yell at him for fighting on sacred ground. Leif apologizes and hands Alfred back his weapons. Alfred runs off like a beaten dog. Leif returns to the other Vikings he was speaking to. One of them asks why the man who bears this cross is so important to them. But Leif refuses to answer this, keeping his intentions a secret. The others look at the drawing and tells him that this is an English cross that you can tell by the detail only a Viking who has spent time in England would have it. So this at least narrows down Leif's search. We return to Harold and Freydis and the flirting turned into a bit more than that and now they are banging. After the act, Freydis decides to take that bath Harold mentioned earlier. He asks what she is doing in Katagat. She takes off her shirt and reveals a scar on her back is in the shape of a cross. She then says she is here to find someone. Harold moves the cross he is wearing to his back so she cannot see it. I assume he did this because he does not want her to know he's a Christian, or he does not want her to be uncomfortable having to look at it. He asks who did that to her. She then goes into a story of how when she was younger, a Christian Viking came to her home. Her father and brothers were away. She then goes on and says she had never heard of a Christian Viking before. This reinforces the idea of how isolated the Greenlanders are. When the Christian Viking found out she was alone, he attacked her and knocked her out. She woke naked and tied to the bed. The Viking sexually abused her and called her a pagan whore. Pagans are people who believe in many gods, so like Norse mythology. After the man finished, he carved the cross on her back, saying he was converting her to Christianity. Harold asks what the name of the Viking was, hoping he could help her in her quest for revenge. She does not know his name, however. Leif barges in to let her know a ship is coming into the harbor. They are hoping to get lucky and spot the man who did the crime. They go to the dock and see two men. Freydis recognizes one of them for the one who abused her all those years ago, though it is not clear which one. The one on the left is Gunnar Magnusson, and the one on the right is Olaf Haraldsson. Harold comes to greet the two and calls Olaf brother, and he seems to know Gunnar as well. Freydis sees this and kind of complicates things for her since she just slept with a friend of a person she wants dead. She is probably questioning the character of Harold if that is the kind of friends he keeps. Freydis is about to make her move and kill the man, but Leif tells her to wait, knowing she would most likely end up dead if she tried to kill him here. Harold, Olaf, and Gunnar leave Kattegat on horseback with a band of Vikings with them. The Greenlanders follow, waiting to get revenge. The Greenlanders see where Harold and his group are heading. They see an army in the canyon below. This is the force King Canute has formed to get revenge on the English. They then see Harold, Gunnar, and Olaf head into one of the bigger tents. We are now with Harold introducing the two to King Canute of Denmark. 
Knut seems to know of Olaf and calls him Jarl. A Jarl is a chief or noble in Scandinavia. We then find out that Harald and Olaf are only half-brothers sharing the same mother. Though Olaf is the older of the two, Olaf asks the king how they could be of service to him. King Knut wants the two for their knowledge. Olaf and Gunnar helped build the defenses around London. Having that kind of knowledge will help greatly when they attack the city. Harold tells the two their plan for attacking the English is to surprise them by going up the Thames River. Gunnar says that won't work, that it is fortified, and they got lookouts around the coast. King Canute wants to hear what they think they should do. Gunnar is about to say when Olaf cuts him off. He first wants to mention the problem he wants resolved first. He tells Canute how he is impressed by how many tribes he has fighting under his flag, but many of the tribes are pagans, so they believe in Odin rather than Christ. Canute cuts him off believing he knows where this is going. He says this invasion is about avenging the murder of our people, all Viking people that he draws no distinctions between pagan and Christian. That is where Olaf does though, and he says he refuses to fight with pagans, that this war is doomed because of this alliance because it is sacrilege. King Canute points out he still came, so he must have a solution. Olaf wants to have a mass conversion while all the other leaders of the pagan tribes are here. Harold believes this is insane, that it could cause a civil war. Olaf says that without their knowledge of the defenses of London, any attack they make is blind. So if they want their help, they have to agree to the offer. King Canute denies the offer, not wanting in-house fighting between the Vikings. We return to the Greenlanders who are in the woods outside where the army is located. One of them points out that the man they are searching for has not left the main tent yet, so he must be important. One of them thinks this plan is suicide now, believing things have changed. That before today, they never saw more than 40 people together in one place, and now they see an army. He believes this plan is hopeless. Freydis is kind of disgusted by the cowardice of the man and storms off. Leif comes to talk to her. She's mad that Leif stopped her from killing the man in the harbor. Leif says, you would be dead if I didn't. She then goes on to say that she would be in Valhalla then, and father would have been proud. Valhalla is the afterlife for Vikings. It is the hall located in Asgard, ruled over by Odin. It is reserved for people who die in combat nobly. Leif asks her to trust him, so it seems he may have a plan. We return to Harald. It is now night and he enters Olaf's tent trying to get him to reconsider. Olaf is not budging, however, he will not fight with pagans. Harald brings up their brother who died in the St. Bryce's Day Massacre, Sten. Olaf points out that he was a half-brother like him. So pulling at his heartstrings may not work. Harold points out how he was the godfather to Sten's children, both killed during the massacre. Harold cannot believe he does not want to avenge them. Olaf says he prays for them every night, but revenge is the motive of the heathen, and Christ forbids it, which is true. Christ is about love and forgiveness and turning the other cheek. Harold then mentions the gold the English have, and when Canute conquers England, he will use those riches to expand his empire. So he's basically saying Olaf will be well rewarded for his contributions to the war effort. Olaf is now reconsidering his stance. We are now with Leif, he is walking into the camp, he sees a Christian mass happening. As I said before, being from Greenland, he has been sheltered from Christianity for the most part, so he really does not know what is going on. Another Viking sees his tattoo and realizes he believes in Odin and Norse mythology. He tells him to follow him before one of the Christians spots him. So Olaf is not the only one with these harsh beliefs about the pagans. In real life, they were much more tolerant of each other. In the show, they are not. It is used for drama in, in the television show. All the Vikings are gathering around a hill. King Canute and Harold are on top. They are going to address the men. Canute goes into a speech about how 100 years ago, Vikings set off for England to avenge the death of Ragnar Lothbrok, which they achieved. He was the main character in the original Viking series and was also a real person. After these victories, the English invited them to settle there. With time, many came there and called the Danelaw their home. Until they were slaughtered by King Othelred and his declaration to kill all Vikings on English soil. Basically, he is giving the rundown of why they are going to war. The crowd loves it and they start cheering. They are ready for war. But Jarl Gorm walks out in front of the crowd saying he will fight the English, but not with Christians. 
that Christians killed his family and are his true enemy. He gets some cheers from the crowd. Jarl Nori confronts him saying he is a worshiper of Satan, being a pagan, and that he is our true enemy. And he also gets cheers from the crowd. So there is a lot of tension between the two faiths right now, which will be an ongoing theme throughout the show. When they are winning battles, it won't be that big a deal, but when they lose one, they will start blaming each other because of it. Nori and Gorm start to have a 1v1 in front of the crowd. They're different factions cheering them on. Harold jumps down from the hill to break it up. He is disappointed in both of them, saying how he spent time with Gorm's family when he was a boy and how he is a Christian. Will he not fight with him? Gorm lowers his head in shame. Harold then looks at Nori and mentions how his sister was killed in the massacre and says, what would she think of you refusing to fight with your brothers? She would think you a coward. He lowers his head in shame as well. Harold goes on to say how he does not care what God you believe in. All that matters to him is your honor, your courage. He then shows the wound he received from stopping the fight, saying, this is not my blood, but Viking blood. And the crowd cheers and everyone is back on the same page. They are with Harold Sigurdsson. So he has united them for now. We are now with Freydis and it is morning. She starts a fire and is making an offering to Odin. She is greeted by Jarl Istrid. Freydis introduces herself. Istrid actually knows her father and was a friend to him. Freydis tells her that he is in Greenland and the reason why she is here is that she is on a mission, though she cannot go into detail on what. Istrid is fine with this and tells Freydis that this land is no longer safe for the old ways, so her making an offering to Odin could get her into some trouble if a Viking Christian saw it. Freydis sees that the army is moving and goes back to her camp with the Greenlanders. They ask if they should wait for Leif. Freydis says that Leif told her to go to Kattegat when the army started moving, so it seems Leif will try and do some scouting on the inside of the army to see what is the best possible way to get the revenge his sister seeks. The army is going back to Kattegat anyways, where they will link up with Leif. We return to Leif. He is following Olaf, trying to get in close with his group. He is stopped, however, by three Vikings who somehow recognize him. They say it's Ericsson. Your father is Eric Thorvaldsson, right? Eric the Red? Which is correct. They go on to say how Leif's father killed their brother and it seems they want some revenge. They attack Leif, but he is able to defend himself and beats the crap out of the three. One on the ground says he's just like his father. Leif tells him that he is wrong, that if he was, you would all be dead, and then he smacks him with the broad edge of the sword. Harold sees all of this and recognizes him from Kattegat when he walked in on him and Freydis. Harold wants to talk to him and finds him by the river cleaning up. Harold also seems to know who Leif's father was, Eric Thorvaldsson, a Viking warrior who was banished from Norway and Iceland for murder also known as Eric the Red. This is actually based on history. Leif's father was Eric the Red, and he was banished to Greenland for murder. Harold is quite impressed with Leif's fighting, and he properly introduces himself. Harold also mentions how Freydis told him how Leif captained their boat all the way from Greenland. Harold wants Leif to join them. They always need good captains and good fighters. He promises him glory if he does. He goes on to say that glory is what truly defines a Viking. Leif says he'll think about it and walks away. Leif has no interest in going to England. He just wants to help his sister get revenge. Harold makes one last remark about how he would like to know more about his sister Freydis, so he's already simping hard for her. Once Leif is out of earshot, Harold tells one of his guards to keep an eye on him. Harold does know that Freydis wants revenge, so he knows Leif is probably helping her. Harold still wants her to get her revenge, but not if it hinders the war effort. It is now night and King Canute meets Istrid, who is the Jarl of Katgat. He asks if his army can camp outside her walls and depart from her harbor to England. She agrees and welcomes him in. We see that Freydis and the other Greenlanders are already inside. We are now in the Great Hall. They are having a feast. King Canute, Harold, Olaf, Istrid, and Gunnar are at the high table. Leif is in the hall as well. On the outside, the Greenlanders are create a distraction, and Freydis is able to slip into the main hall. They all start making their way to the high table, so they must have met 
off screen and discuss the plan of attack here. Harold sees Leaf making his way towards them. He gets down from the high table and tells him to stop whatever he has planned. Leaf says he's not the one you should be worried about. And we see Freitas has sneaked her away behind them all and kills Gunner, carving a cross into him. Throughout the episode, it is made to make it look like Olaf is the one who did the act, but if you looked at his cross closely, it did not look like the picture Leif had earlier in the episode. Olaf almost kills Freitas for killing his friend, but was stopped by Istrid. She says that this is her house. She's the one who renders judgment here. Freitas tells them that Gunnar was judged guilty of sexually abusing her in Greenland, that she was in her right for revenge. Olaf believes this is a lie and he threatens to burn the city to the ground. Istrid has archers above showing she is not scared of his threats. Harold now stands up for Freitas, saying he believes her, and tells her to show the scar Gunner gave her on her back, the cross. Harold does this because he does not want a conflict here, and he believes Freitas. He seemed to have known Gunner, so maybe he knew Gunner was a prick, or he could just be simping really hard right now. Freitas shows the scar. The crowd seems to be on Freitas' side now, probably the ones who believe in Odin, so the pagans. The Christians probably still want to see her dead. Istrid says she will render judgment in the morning, and Freitas and Leif are taken away to prison until then. So what do you think of episode 1 of Vikings Valhalla? Leave it down in the comments below, and if you want more Vikings content, please subscribe and like the video, and also check out the Twitter, link in the description below, and as always, have an awesome day.